Hi, I'm Alicia here with Growth Match, and today we're hearing from Nicola about how companies can build their go-to-market strategy to become a profitable business. Let's start with a brief introduction. Can you tell us about who you are and what you specialize in? Hi, Alicia. I'm very, very happy to be here and talk with you. Uh, as you said, my name is Nicola, or here in the U.S. usually uh, shortened to Nick. Um, I'm located in Texas, in DFW area, one of the thriving areas for, for startup industry in the U.S. They call it uh, Silicon Prairie <laughs> nowadays. Uh, I specialize in building go-to-market strategies uh, and, in general, working with startups on establishing first traction, uh, onboarding first commercial clients, and figuring out the way how to make uh, their startup actually a profitable small business. From there, we go towards investors and whatever it takes. Great. Thanks, Nicola. And, and what is your experience so far working with this field? Well, I'm in, I'm in sales business for 20 years, 22 years now. Um, in the IT field, in the field of software industry since the beginning of 21st century. And I went through small companies, medium companies, uh, corporations, used to work for Microsoft. That's where I first started actually interacting with startups and looking at them, but from the corporate perspective. Mm -hmm. Then over time, um, I spent some time in consulting industry, pure consulting, uh, then become founder myself. I went through two startups, uh, had two exits from them. Um, now I have a third one I'm working on and the fourth one that is coming up in a, in a, in a very close future. Um, for the last couple of years, uh, I made a decision to step out of any corporate corporate function and work exclusively in the consulting world. Mm -hmm. So right now, consulting for past two years full-time plus my little babies, my startups. That's great. Can you tell me a little bit about who your ideal client to work with right now is? Um, well, usually uh, there are two, two, uh, two sides of that story. One is early stage startups. Uh, that are either just getting ready to build the product uh, or are getting there, they have some prototype built and they're looking for the ways and looking for initial, initial traction on the market or a little bit more mature ones that already have market traction but would like to uh, expand on the new markets. Mm -hmm. When I say new markets, yes, locally here in the U.S., exploring new market market niches that they can step in but also where I where my speci specialization is it's international markets mm. US is a 300 million uh, people market Europe is 600 million people market European yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a huge for any startup looking to progress further onboarding five or ten clients from Europe Union, brings them to the global perspective. Mm. They actually have proven market value on a different markets. On the other hand, a little bit of a trick behind it, those markets things alike. Western Europe, UK, US have pretty similar mentality and pretty similar technology-wise uh, logic that how they work. So that's where, that's where I have my, let's say, magic spice to, to add on, and I did spend, I moved to US two years ago. Mm -hmm. So for first big part of my career, uh, I spent in Europe working all, all, all over the continent and definitely can, definitely can bring in a very good network of contacts, partners, and so on and so on. That sounds so valuable. And, and when you're working with those types of companies, what big mistake do you see them making when it comes to this work? And how can you see that being avoided? Well, the most obvious one and the first one that's very common, that, it, that is very common, is lack of uh, market research and competition research. Mm. 
uh, founders tend to step into the trap that's very easy. Uh, that's very uh, easy to step in. Uh, you know, when you're in the middle of something, it's really hard to step out and see the big picture. Mm. Uh, and it's not, uh, it's not anyone's fault, but it does happen very often. They tend to build product for themselves without actually having enough independent conversations with players on the market with their potential and future clients that will give them objective and uh, honest opinion, does that problem even need to be solved? Is the business model there? Uh, who are the players? Whenever a startup, startup every startup is trying to uh, solve one problem in the world, something very specific. Uh, there is already companies that are on the market that are their future clients are already doing it somehow. How are they doing it now? Competition is uh, not always direct competitor who is doing exactly the same thing. Uh, very good, very good example uh, that explains a lot about a lot about that is um, uh, Amazon's philosophy about uh, ebooks. Amazon used to be the biggest bookstore in the world, the biggest online bookstore. Um, and that's actually one of, the, one of the wrong steps that Amazon made. Wrong, whatever that kind of giant can, can do wrong. Uh, the question was, okay, we all know, we all knew the world is digitizing. Everything is becoming digital. So logically they said, okay, what will be the biggest competitor of regular bookstore. Logical answer to that was books will become digital. Yeah. They came up with Kindle. Yeah. They said, okay, let's make books digital and let's give people the opportunity to read in a digital form. Well, that was a mistake. The competition, the biggest competition of old fashioned books were not digital books. The biggest competition were social networks, mm. YouTube, TikTok, things like that. Why? They shortened the attention span. People stopped reading books in paper or in digital. It doesn't matter what was the form. People stopped reading books. They turned towards different, faster ways of communication. So that's, uh, that's a good example how we can overlook something uh, competitor that is coming from the side. It's not obvious one, but it's there. Recognizing those in the early stages is very important, uh, primarily because startups, by their vocation, that's why they're called startup, and that's different. They're trying to disrupt the market. Yeah. They are the sidekick. Mm. In this example, startup is usually the one who is coming from the side. Startup is YouTube to traditional books, mm. disrupting the market. When you want to do that, you want to see from where else can similar sidekicks come in. Right. That's the part, that's the part where the mistake is most often happen. Uh, it's usually a good idea to get someone who is outside of their box, who has a different perspective, to give them brutally honest angle on their product and on the product market fit. Product market fit is number one reason why startups fail. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like you're really bringing them back to those fundamentals and that that third party perspective is extremely important here. Um, it really is. And, and getting it right from the outset or wherever they're at is so important to save them time and money from doing the wrong fit for so long. Um, so when you start working with someone like this, what kind of results do you end up achieving for them? And what is it about what you do that gets them there? Uh. The most tangible result in the world for any startup is revenue. Right. That is the result I bring in. 
Awesome. Uh, depending on the stage, if they don't have the product, we cannot bring, bring in the revenue. So we'll have different KPIs. We'll have number of pilot projects ran, we'll have number of whatever, but there is always, uh, when I'm working with startup, there has to be tangible KPI in the contract. What the heck do we want to achieve by this? It must not be one of those flaky, we'll do our best effort on time and material basis, and we'll just talk a lot and have a thousand workshops and all that. Uh, there is always a tangible. Most often, if they're ready for market, there will be a certain target that mm. needs to be achieved in terms of revenue or number of clients or whatever it is that actually makes it uh, makes it profitable, or alternatively, we can talk about some of, some other some other KPIs. The way I bring them there, well, I improvise. <laughs> <laughs> I utilize the experience and the knowledge I have from um, different worlds, small businesses, corporate world, um, startup world. As I said, my own startups. Um, we utilize. Uh, I have a pretty good network with a lot of different players in the market from different investors and VCs uh, to different uh, innovative companies that like to test and try uh, new things. Uh, a lot of companies and people who will give an honest opinion and are ready to try new things and onboard if they're a good fit, if they're a good fit for that. So experience, knowledge, system, and a pretty decent network of contacts. That's amazing. A lot to bring to the table here. So if somebody is interested in working with you and getting that increase in the revenue or the other KPIs they're looking for, how can they explore that with you? They can find me on Growth Match, Growth Match Experts Profile, book an introductory call. It's completely complimentary and free of charge. Let's talk. Let's figure out how we can do great things together. Engagement starts from thousand bucks and up. But as I said, again, I'll, I'll go back to that. I do not get into contracts and working relationships if I'm not absolutely sure that I can bring value and tangible results for the startup. Amazing. Thank you so much, Nicola, for chatting with me today. If you are interested in connecting with him, feel free to head over to Growth Match and schedule a discovery call. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alicia. It was a pleasure.